Today I want to show you how to do an orbital diagram, which is really similar to the electron configurations I was doing in my previous video. So if you don't know how to do an electron configuration, go back and watch that video. Now the main difference between an orbital diagram and an electron configuration is we're going to factor in those s, p, d, and f orbitals. So any s orbital well, any S section on the periodic table, or S sublevel, will contain one orbital. Any P sublevel would contain three orbitals. Any D sublevel would contain five. And any F sublevel would contain seven. So that's an important thing to just kind of memorize and put in the back of your mind. So now we're ready to actually do the uh, orbital diagram. So again, I'm going to start with my 1s section of my periodic table, and I'm going to work bottom up. I've just found that that works out best. So 1s, there's only one orbital since it's an s. So I'm going to draw a line next to that just to represent that one orbital. And there are two blocks. One. There are two blocks in that section. One, two. So I'm going to draw two arrows to represent those two electrons. Now I move on to the next section, and I have my 2s and my 2p. So I'm going to write 2s and then 2p. s is the same way as before. I only have one orbital, two electrons. Now with my p, I have three orbitals. So I'm going to draw three lines next to the p, and I'm going to put in six electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And notice I put those in all ups first and then all downs. We need to obey Hun's rule, so I need to put one electron in each orbital before I put a second, and they all must have the same spin. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the 3s section, one orbital, two arrows, and then I finally have my 3p section, three orbitals, one, two, two, three electrons. Because I have phosphorus, I stop right here. So I only have one, two, three arrows to put in there. So that's the orbital diagram for phosphorus. Now let's try chromium. So I start off the same way again. So I have a 1s one orbital, two electrons, 2s, one orbital, two electrons, 2p, three orbitals, six electrons, 3s, one orbital, two electrons, 3p, three orbitals, six electrons, now, this is where it gets a little interesting. I have 4s, one orbital, two electrons, and now I'm in the 3d, and I have five orbitals total, as you can see right there. So I want to put five lines next to the d. And if I look at my periodic table, chromium's right there, so one, two, three, four arrows need to go in there. So I would go one, two, three, four, and I'd stop. So I ran out of arrows. That's chromium. I know that last one doesn't have anything in it, but that's okay. So that's the orbital diagram for chromium. That's what it should look like. Okay, so try these three, pause the video, and when you get back, I'll show you how to do them. All right, so let's go through these quickly. So let's do neon first. So I have 1s, one orbital, two electrons, 2s, one orbital, two electrons, 2p, three orbitals, six electrons, and that's neon. Now let's do magnesium. So I start off the same way. 1s, one orbital, two electrons, 2s, one orbital, two electrons, 2p, three orbitals, six electrons, and then I am finally done in my 3s, one orbital, two electrons, and that's magnesium. So now let's try copper. 
So I have 1s, 1 orbital, 2 electrons, 2s, 1 orbital, 2 electrons, 2p, 3 orbitals, 6 electrons, 3s, 1 orbital, 2 electrons, 3p, 3 orbitals, 6 electrons, 4s, 1 orbital, 2 electrons, 3d, 5 orbitals, and I have 9 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that's Copper's orbital diagram. If you have any other questions about the topic, make sure to come in tomorrow and ask.